Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today I'm going to show you how to build one of the instructional tools I use when introducing Programmable Logic Controllers, or PLCs. The goal is to make an inexpensive, portable PLC trainer board that can be utilized to first introduce PLC programming and demonstrate various PLC basic program functions like latching, timers, and counters. Is this the world's most inexpensive PLC trainer? I'd venture a cautious, maybe. Is this the most fully functional PLC trainer? No, no it isn't. This tool is for introductory purposes only and must be approached with this limitation in mind. Long story short, this is a toy with pretty blinking lights. A proper PLC class will not limit itself to turning pilot lights on and off, but rather interact, control, and coordinate real-world actuators and real electromechanical, hydraulic, and or pneumatic systems. This being said, important basic concepts and PLC programming fundamentals can be quickly demonstrated using this trainer with significantly reduced possibility of these core concepts being lost in the noise. This version of the PLC trainer features the Tico SG2 10HRA PLR, an inexpensive basic programmable logic controller featured in the example PLC Tico SG2 PLR lecture available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched this lecture yet or only dimly recall its contents, please take the time to do so now. The Tico SG2 10HRA PLR has been expressly chosen for this project because it is extremely inexpensive, necessitates no external accessory power supply, and a full feature version of the Tico SG2 client programming software is available free of charge. If you wanted to, you could upgrade this trainer board using a more robust, but still basic PLC, like an Eaton Easy Intelligent Relay, a Siemens Logo Logic Module, or an Allen Bradley Pico or Microprogrammable Logic Controller. However, increased functionality comes at an increased price. To further reduce the expense of this trainer, I've made use of interface elements like switches and pilot lamps already found in the Basic Motor Control Kit. The orientation of the Basic Motor Control Kit lecture, available at the Big Bad Tech channel, details the elements within this inexpensive kit. If one already has this kit, the only item necessary to complete the basic PLC trainer is a Tico SG2 10HRA PLR, which might cost $80 to $100, and a communications cable, which may cost $30. It may be a recommended practice to have students build this exact trainer board, use it a couple times to get the hang of it, then disassemble it and build a real PLC controlled system controlling real actuators. Additionally, this PLC specific trainer board needn't be assembled on a separate board but rather can be built on the existing motor control trainer board as detailed in the Build a Motor Control Trainer Board lecture available at the Big Bad Tech channel. This being said, I like the small separate trainer board because it's portable and focuses just on the PLC of interest. If your resources are limited and your time is short, you could theoretically get by with just this trainer, although I wouldn't recommend it. Start by assembling two four-hole push-button enclosures, four switches, and four 120 volt AC rated pilot lights. For the purposes of this trainer, we'll make use of a normally open maintained contact selector switch as input one, a normally closed momentary contact red push button as input two, a normally open momentary contact green push button as input three, and a normally open momentary contact yellow push button as input four. Inputs five and six will not be used for this trainer. Outputs Q1 through Q4 will selectively energize or de-energize pilot lamps. For starters, we'll need a small plywood board, a length of DIN rail, some wire duct, a couple terminal blocks and end brackets, as well as a power cord and circuit breaker. Lock out and tag out the bare power cord before your lazy lab partner plugs it in and hurts someone. Mount the two push button enclosures centered on the top and bottom of the board and mount the DIN rail in the center. Then surround the DIN rail and push button enclosures with wire duct, forming kind of like an H with two horizontal rungs. Mount the cord and secure the board with a strain relief. Then, land the line, neutral, and ground wire respectively on the circuit block, terminal block, and grounding block. Now, mount the Tico SG2 PLR next door, then route the line output of the circuit breaker and neutral terminal block to the line and neutral input of the Tico SG2 PLR. Next, we need to wire up our input. Start by wiring the line output of the circuit breaker to the input of each switch. The black wire serves this purpose. Note the daisy chain connection pools the input terminals of the normally open maintain contact selector switch, the normally closed momentary contact red push button, 
the normally open momentary contact green push button, the normally open momentary contact yellow push button. The closure of any particular switch would energize only that particular switch's output with 120 volts AC. Note the electromechanical nature of the red push button in the second hole is normally closed, whereas all other switches are normally open. This detail will become exceedingly important when we discuss the electromechanical nature of a particular switch versus the programmed instructions assigned to a particular input. Now, each switch's output terminal needs to be routed to the appropriate PLC input terminal. Let's start by landing a brown spiraled wire on the output terminal of the normally open maintain contact selector switch, a red spiraled wire on the output terminal of the normally closed momentary contact red push button, an orange spiraled wire on the output terminal of the normally open momentary contact green push button, and a yellow spiraled wire on the output terminal of the normally open momentary contact yellow push button. Then we need to land the appropriate output of the switches to the appropriate input terminals of the PLC. The brown spiraled wire from the normally open maintain contact selector switch goes to I1. The red spiraled wire from the normally closed momentary contact red push button goes to I2. The orange spiraled wire from the normally open momentary contact green push button goes to I3. And the yellow spiraled wire from the normally open momentary contact yellow push button goes to I4. Now we can button up the top wire duct an input push button enclosure and theoretically never have to deal with rewiring inputs ever again. This is the principal advantage of PLCs over hardwire relay based ladder logic. One can wire up a set of inputs once and simply reprogram the device to perform an entirely new function without the time consuming necessity of rewiring it. Let's now wire up the outputs. Let's start by wiring the line output of the circuit breaker to the one terminal of each electrical mechanical relay output black wire serves this purpose. Note the daisy chain connection pools the one terminal of each relay output such that the closure of any particular output relay contact would energize only that particular relay's output with 120 volts AC. Let's prep our output by pooling the low side X2 connection of each pilot lamp with the neutral connection. The white daisy chain wire serves this purpose. Now, let's land a brown spiral wire on the first pilot lamp's high X1 terminal, a red spiral wire on the second pilot lamp's high X1 terminal, an orange spiral wire on the third pilot lamp's high X1 terminal, and a yellow spiral wire on the fourth pilot lamp's high X1 terminal. Then we need to wire the electric mechanical relay output of the PLC to the appropriate pilot lamp. The brown spiral wire for the first pilot lamp goes to the output of Q1, the red spiraled wire for the second pilot lamp goes to the output of Q2. The orange spiraled wire for the third pilot lamp goes to the output of Q3. And the yellow spiraled wire on the fourth pilot lamp goes to the output of Q4. Now, we can button up the bottom wire duct and output pilot lamp enclosure and theoretically never have to deal with rewiring outputs again. Snap the side wire ducts closed and bam, you got yourself a fully functional PLC trainer for less than the price of a textbook. Now that is effective education on a budget. Why are you spending hundreds of dollars on a textbook that you never use? I mean, let's be honest here. When you can use this free online resource and spend your money on building a real device you can really use. But I digress. This kind of ends the instructional portion of this short lecture. However, if you're already skilled in programming the Tico SG2 PLR, one can perform a quick functions test of the assembled trainer. A recommended test program is a simple four-rung program where each input has been instantiated as a make construction controlling one input. I1 to Q1, I2 to Q2, I3 to Q3, and I4 to Q4. When we power up, program, and place the Tico SG2 PLR in run mode, note it indicates input 2 is energized in the deactivated state and output Q2 is energized. This is to be expected since the electromechanical nature of the input device assigned to I2 is normally closed, whereas all others are normally open. When the normally open selector switch connected to input 1 is closed, the status display shows that both input 1 and input 2 are energized, and outputs Q1 and Q2 are asserted as can be expected. When only the normally closed red push button connected to input 2 is open, the status display shows that no inputs are energized, and no outputs are asserted as can be expected. When only the green push button connected to input 3 is closed, the status display shows that both input 2 and input 3 are energized, and outputs Q2 and Q3 are asserted as can be expected. Finally, 
when only the normally open yellow push button connected to input 4 is closed. The status display shows that inputs 2 and 4 are energized, and outputs Q2 and Q4 are energized, as can be expected. Here's the same sequence monitoring the operational program. Note in the deactivated state, the make instruction examining input 2 allows logical continuity to output Q2 using the bold highlighted connection. When only the normally open selector switch connected to input 1 is closed, make instruction examining input 1 allows logical continuity onto output Q1. Both outputs Q1 and Q2 are asserted. When only the normally closed red push button connected to input 2 is open, the make instruction examining input 2 disallows logical continuity to output Q2. All outputs are de-energized. When only the normally open green push button connected to input 3 is closed, the make instruction examining input 3 allows logical continuity onto output Q3. Both outputs Q2 and Q3 are asserted. Finally, when only the normally open yellow push button connected to input 4 is closed, the make instruction for input 4 allows logical continuity to output Q4. Outputs Q2 and Q4 are asserted as can be expected. Here's the same sequence zoomed out so one can see the actuation state of the input devices in output pilot lamps. In the deactivated state, output Q2 is asserted. When the normally open selector switch connected to input 1 is closed, output Q1 and Q2 are asserted as can be expected. When only the normally closed red push button connected to input 2 is open, all outputs are de-energized. When only the normally open green push button connected to input 3 is closed, outputs Q2 and Q3 are energized as can be expected. Finally, when only the normally open yellow push button connected to input 4 is closed, outputs Q2 and Q4 are asserted as can be expected. If any input or output fails to perform as expected using this simple test program, lock out and tag out the system and get to work troubleshooting the source of your problem. Most likely it's an open wire or the close proximity of your lazy lab partner. Alright, that's about it for this short lecture. We'll be making use of this inexpensive PLC trainer in later applications exercises. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.